Today's reading from Romans was a hard one for me. I mean, <laughs> I get the basic message. Don't get all stressed out about the small details of living out your faith. Keep focused on the big picture. So long as everyone is honoring the Lord and giving thanks to God, just work with it. And the way Paul lays it out, those who are weak in faith, and who wants to be weak in faith, are those who rely on a lot of guidelines to keep them on the straight and narrow. Those who are strong in faith don't need so many rules, they rely more on God's grace. Those who are strong shouldn't bully the weak into giving up their guidelines. Those who are weak shouldn't look down on the strong for having a more structured approach to their faith, for not having a more structured approach to their faith. And everyone should leave the judging to God. Now, I am aware of the irony of this message coming from Paul, because he is pretty dedicated to telling a whole lot of people, strong and weak, exactly what they should do. And he doesn't seem adverse to a bit of judgment now and again when he thinks the church could use some. But perhaps because of that, I'll accept that he has a lot of experience in this area. So if he says to back off, I'll believe him. The challenge I have with this whole passage is where does it end? Who do I get to judge? Do I refrain from judging just the members of the church I belong to? Are there Christians? What about folks I know who aren't Christians but have a deep faith in another tradition? What about really committed atheists? Or when I just don't know what their faith situation is and we just work together? Or, you know, we're part of the same political situation. Because there are folks I know who would 100% say they're Christians, and they do things that I in no way can fit into any understanding of Christianity I've ever heard of. This passage says I shouldn't judge people, but it seems to me there has to be a point where judging people and deciding I definitely do not want to be in any kind of fellowship with them is the only sane path to take. Now, Paul was writing to these churches in Rome to get them to help with the next step in his ministry. He wanted to bring Christ to the people in the province of Spain. Paul had been shockingly successful in the eastern Mediterranean. Now he was being called to head to the other end, to the western end where they had not heard of Jesus Christ, where there were very few Jewish communities where they didn't speak Greek or Hebrew, two languages he spoke very well, where they didn't really even speak Latin, which was a language he hardly spoke at all. Paul's whole process for sharing the good news that had worked so well in Corinth and Ephesus and Galicia was not going to work at all in Spain. He needed the financial support and the contacts that the Roman congregations could offer him if he was going to have any hope of reaching the native people in Spain. But more than that, the people who were native to Spain, not you know the Roman imperial hierarchy and all the carpetbaggers and political appointees and the soldiers who were there to keep the trade flowing, and the taxes rolling in. The people who were native to Spain were seen as barbarians. They were dismissed as uncivilized, uncultured, barely human. Just, they were just resources that that needed to be harnessed if the Roman Empire was going to get the full value out of the territory. Those were the people that Paul was being called to serve, and they were completely different from Paul himself. They were the people that God was sending him to, to share that amazing reality that Jesus had shared with Paul all those years ago on the road to Damascus. Paul was being called to those people, the ones who had been written off by everyone except for the value of the labor and the wealth of the land they worked. Those were the people that Paul wanted to tell about Jesus Christ. Paul wanted to tell them 
those native people of Spain, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Christ died and rose in order to create community across the most fundamental of differences, Jew and Greek, slave and free, dead and living. Christ is with us in life and death. Indeed, who else is with us in death? Paul wanted to bring that message to the people of Spain. He wanted to reassure them that there was no single person who was beyond the reach of Jesus' saving love. And if he was going to bring that message to Spain, relying on the contacts and finances of the churches in Rome, then they needed to stop undercutting the message by saying that some people were somehow not going to be saved because they only ate vegetables or kept a different calendar. Because if life and death couldn't separate you from God's love, surely a slice of sirloin eaten on a Thursday afternoon could separate you from Jesus' salvation. Paul wanted, Paul needed the churches in Rome to start living out their beliefs. Now, I admit, in this crazy political COVID-19 year, I need to hear Paul's message. I need to hear and believe that nothing, nothing will separate me from the love of God. Not in this crazy life or on the other side of death. And sure, to hear that message, I may also need to hear that I need to keep working on the truly biggest picture. That nothing, nothing separates me from the love of God and nothing separates the people I want nothing to do with from the love of God. And that I am the least qualified person to judge who is in and who is out. There is nothing more different from me than the love of God. And that is what I am counting on for my salvation. Perhaps the most sane thing I can do is to let go of my conviction that somehow I can keep myself separate from other people. Perhaps the most sane thing I can do is to remember that we are all transformed by God's grace in the end into something redeemed by God. Perhaps I can accept that my faith is weak enough or strong enough to believe that and to live that way. Now, perhaps not. But maybe it's worth following Paul's advice and seeing what happens when I do. When I should stop struggling over who I'm allowed to judge. Because if God isn't drawing a circle to make insiders and outsiders, then maybe I shouldn't be either. Maybe that will turn out to be easier than trying to figure out something I can't possibly determine. Amen.